Hey you guys, I am driving to meet my friends Ryan and Kristen right now from the company Wild Earth. It's a vegan dog food slash dog treats company and they're super awesome and I wanted to bring you with me. We're gonna get a vegan meal in Sacramento. So I'm here with Ryan and Kristen and Ryan is the founder of the vegan company Wild Earth. Vegan dog treats, soon to be vegan pet food. That's right. Hey, Michelle. Uh, longtime friend. Yes, long But also friend. founder of one of the coolest new companies in the world. Thank I you, would say. thank you. Like massive potential, so tell us about yeah, Wild Especially Earth. if you like furry friends. Yes. So if you like furry friends, so this is uh, this is our prototype bag. This is the sample bag for Wild Earth. So we have actually new, new better branding on wildearth.com. Wild Earth, we are bringing new cuisine to pet food, 100% animal free, uh, made with koji. So for those of you that are not familiar with koji, koji, koji is a fungi. Uh, you have had it, so it's the third kingdom of life. It's not plant, not animal, it's fungi. And koji is in many of the foods we've enjoyed for many, many thousands of years. So it's in miso soup, and soy sauce, and it's used to make sake as well. The umami taste that you taste in miso soup, that is koji. So that koji is umami, this savory taste. We love it, and it looks like dogs love it too. So, but I thought dogs had to eat meat. Oh yeah, well, that's, that's the, the question we always get. So, so dogs need protein. Yeah. Whether it comes from an animal, uh, a plant, or a fungi, mm -hmm. dogs need protein. And so what we're doing is we're going for a high source of protein, which is koji, uh, and other fungi, which actually have about 50% protein. To give you an idea, uh, a steak has between 20 to 30% 30 protein. Mm -hmm. Koji and other types of fungi have about 50% protein. So it's very high in protein, and it has the right types of protein. So mm -hmm. koji has the 10 essential amino acids that dogs require in their food. And why not soy, pea protein, like all these other companies yeah, I mean, are these, with different options? Yeah, these are why different this? options. Yeah. So, um, you know, we really frame ourselves as an alternative to conventional pet food. Mm -hmm. Really, that's the market that we're going after. We are a big fan of all of the other brands that are actually bringing soy and other proteins to market. Uh, I actually personally have no issues with it whatsoever, but I think we can make even better proteins, cleaner, better proteins for dogs. So whether that's an animal or a plant-based protein, we think we can make something better with Koji. So a couple years ago, we were at an event together. We were at an event together. And we're together. going to Starbucks with yes. Kristen, who's behind yes. the camera. Yes, Hi. thank you, Kristen. And we're about to put our Starbucks order in, and, and Ryan's like talking, 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 like usual. Well. And this time it was about this idea of like making a pet food. Yes. That is going to totally revolutionize pet food. Yes. And will not only save bazillions of lives, yes. but also be healthier, yeah. cleaner for yeah. animals. And Kristen and I were both just like, uh huh, like another one of Ryan's ideas. And here we are, like, a year, two years later? Two years later, yeah. Two years later, and not only does your company exist, like you have... But we have a product on the market. Product on the market. As of a week and a half ago. Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so it's been a, a long journey yeah. during that time. And really the vision was replacing conventional pet food. Yeah. So one of the big problems when we talked about originally, and I'd only just started that journey, was that conventional pet food uh, is actually really unclean. It's not clean yes. food. Yeah, I and, hear roadkill is in it. Yeah, so like, so yeah, so FDA stuff. inspection reports yeah. have found like roadkill, yeah. possums, deers, all sorts of stuff. Uh, but not only that, I mean, it, it is non-human grade meat, which right. basically means dead, uh, which means diseased or, di or animals that have died from unknown causes, right. uh, things that cannot be put into the human food system. And in addition, yeah. there's contamination. So there's contamination from euthanasia drug, not a good thing. That's crazy. Not We're a good thing. We're feeding our dogs euthanized Euthanized animals. animals. Yeah, yeah, we don't know exactly what they are. We think that yeah. it's probably horses. Mm -hmm. Some of the deeper web oh, conspiracy yeah. stuff uh, are actually euthanized dogs and cats. We right. don't know if that's true. Right. Uh, I'm pretty certain if there are horses that are getting into the uh, right. food chain for dogs. Yeah. Um, and then there's also plastics too. So Tell there've me been about that. yeah. So what? so there've been FDA inspection reports. You can actually look this up online. Okay. Uh, the FDA goes and inspects uh, rendering plants. Okay. So rendering plants, for those of you that are not familiar with it, rendering plants are places where you go and you take meat and you put them under really high temperatures and you churn them up and you make like a meat meal, right? Mm -hmm. That's basically what happens. That's how we make dog food and actually some types of human like food. Hot like hot like dogs. Like hot dogs. Like all those, the pink slime. Yeah, the pink slime yeah, yeah. stuff, right? That's basically what goes into our dogs and our cats' yeah. foods. And uh, when the FDA have gone and inspected, they found, obviously, the road kills. They found, uh, they've actually found that what people are doing is because 
uh, food that's gone bad in the grocery store, if you think of the meat that's gone bad in grocery stores, mm -hmm. there have been uh, inspection reports that have shown that that some workers are just not taking off the plastic. So the grocery stores are like, take my meat back. Take my meat, yeah, my, my bad industry. meat, take my ba bad meat. I can't sell it to humans mm -hmm. anymore. The pet food industry picks it up, should be taking off the plastic wrappers yeah. and the styrofoam, uh, but in some cases uh, are not. So there's plastic in the dog food. Yeah, it's just cheaper to throw the yeah. plastic into the dog food mm -hmm. and it, it melts it, right? So the renderer melts it and it just gets mixed up into the dog food. That's so and so And so what we know, which is crazy, is that we know that plastic is a known carcinogen. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are saying, well, why are, my, why, is my, why are so many dogs getting cancers? Well, maybe we should look at their food and say, if they have a euthanasia drug and they have plastic in their food, outside of just eating meat, they have these two things in their food. Right maybe that's why they're getting sick and cancer and all these other right. issues. It's so crazy because, so my dog has been vegan for like almost 10 years now and he's seen numerous vets, different places that I've lived. They always give a big thumbs up. He's healthy, he's happy, he loves his food. Um, but whenever I post about that, people freak out. I am the dog hater tormenting my dog, keeping him from eating meat and it's so unnatural and I'm feeding him unhealthily, all of these things, yeah, right? Yeah, That I hear. And it, you look at traditional dog food that's on the shelves, especially cheaper dog food, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you look at what it, what's in that, and that is the, A, the farthest thing from natural, yeah. but B, so unhealthy and toxic, has all of this crap in it, Horrible it's not stuff. regulated, yep. it's just uh, horrendous. And so, um, yeah, I think it's there's such a need for awareness yep. about the dog food industry. There's a lot of change that needs yep. to happen in that, and one is just more regulation for maybe meat-based pet foods for people that want to go that route. But being able to provide an alternative of clean protein mm -hmm. that is non-animal based for the animal lovers out yeah. there that want to have companion animals that eat dog food and are thriving and happy and healthy but not yeah. causing the suffering of other animals is amazing. Yeah, well, thank you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, we're, we're on a mission, Michelle. So, yeah. so it really is a mission for us. So we really want to remove all of the bad things from our pet's food, right? Mm -hmm. It's not just about the meat. It's actually a story about the other contaminants. So the FDA allows a certain amount of euthanasia drug in the food. It's allowed. It's in the regulation. So you can mm -hmm. look at the regulation. It says uh, this is the, the maximum amount of pentobarbital, which is the euthanasia drug, that's allowed in the food. Right. Like imagine if we had rules like that for human food. Imagine if you could put euthanasia drug in, in, in people's hamburgers and steaks. Right. How quickly would almost everyone stop eating meat? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and we're still allowing this in our, in our pet's food. Now, there are some right. very high quality foods uh, that are meat based foods that actually do not have these problems. Right. But most of our pets are eating the stuff that's still, that's still allowed. Right. And so a lot of those high quality foods yes. are very expensive. Very expensive. So how are you going to be able to compete? Are you going to compete? Yeah. So we're, cost yeah. So, yeah. We're, so our aim is, is, a, is, a, is better food for all pets. Mm -hmm. And so our mission starts off. As we're, we're new, uh, will be relatively expensive compared to uh, some of the other conventional pet food brands, the middle of the market pet mm -hmm. food brands. But our aim is to eventually bring down the prices to compete directly with those products. Right, that's awesome. Yeah. And then something you were telling me before that blew my mind and made me really sad yeah. was the animal experimentation that goes on in uh, generic pet food. Yes. Yes. So tell me a little bit about okay, that. Okay, so, so we're going to have a little backing track coming soon. So, uh, so yeah, so one really important thing about the animal experimentation that actually happens in dog food yeah. is that we don't realize that uh, most conventional pet food manufacturers still do animal testing. Like they test on dogs and cats that are in labs. Yeah. They are not cruelty-free pet foods. These foods are not cruelty-free. Yeah. And so there are two types of testing that are done. One is digestibility, mm -hmm. which is really an invasive, really unpleasant test and procedure that's done on dogs. So every time a new pet food comes out, uh, most, not all, but most pet food brands, conventional pet food brands, they actually test this way. They basically uh, put it into a little sieve, they put the, the actual dog food into a, like a little bag that's a, a sieve type bag, they put it on a string and then shove it down the throat of the dog and then pull it out at timed intervals to see how that dog has digested that food, like how much of the, the kibble is left. Right? I mean, this is a horrible so thing. Ridiculous. No one in the pet food industry talks about it. And so we really have this mission of like shining light on these really right. bad practices that are happening throughout the pet food space, right. which we want to ban. Right. And right? these are dog lovers. Like if, if people these saw what was lovers. happening to beagles in laboratories. Yeah. Like, I mean, these are people crazy. who love dogs yeah, yeah, yeah. and they're buying food 
made by companies that are doing animal testing so, right, on dogs. So what's, what are you doing? So we're, we're not doing that. So we okay. basically do, we, we do what's called in vitro lab testing. So we okay. basically use a lab test mm -hmm. that, that is similar in terms of digestive juices to the uh, digestive juices inside the stomach of a dog. And then we just do it in timed intervals okay. in, in a machine. Okay. Right. So it, and, and that's an FDA approved uh, process that is comparable to dog testing. And what about um, live dogs? Yes, so live dogs. So so on the live dog testing, uh, you have to actually do some palatability testing. So you have to make sure the dogs eat the dog food. Uh, and then this is again where conventional pet food gets it totally wrong. Right. So they are they are testing dog food on dogs that are in laboratories. And don't by the way, move, don't get exercise. Don't get exercise <laughs> are in, you know, they have locked, barred, like think of a, a lab with yeah. bars on it. Like yeah. that is where they are testing these dog foods. And some of the brands that actually are meat free mm -hmm. are also doing this, wow. right? And so, so the thing is, it's really important for us to say, we are, so Wild Earth is a cruelty free brand. We will never test on animals other than volunteer animals. So mm -hmm. we, there are certain things required um, that that we basically do with volunteer uh, dogs and cats. So what have you done so, so far? You don't yeah. have your dog food out. We don't so have a dog food out. We have our treats. So and our treats, yes, our treats have been tested on volunteers. Yay. So uh, so pet parents <laughs> have volunteered. Their dogs have enjoyed our treats. These yep. are all safe ingredients. They're all what's called generally recognized as safe ingredients. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so these, by the FDA. So these are all ingredients that are safe. We've eaten them for many many years. Uh, we are just formatting them in a different way. Yep. Um, and the response has actually been really positive to the treats. So what we did as well is we actually did uh, this one volunteer test where we wanted to see with our treats if we could improve the microbiome of dogs. So one of the big challenges that all pet parents have, as I'm sure you probably had mm -hmm. before, is uh, sometimes it's still a little too loose, mm -hmm. sometimes a little too hard. Right. right? So diarrhea is never good in the house. Yeah. Uh, so, so we wanted to try and, and solve that, that problem. Yeah. So, so we've had preliminary early test results, not a statistically significant, but it appears we can improve the diversity of good uh, bacteria in the gut. Um, and that's led to better stools overall. Yeah. And so we're still we're still getting some more data on that, but we want to be a science-driven company. Yeah. We want to be able to deliver solutions. So our treats themselves should hopefully help with good digestion. So is it sort of like people taking probiotics? It's like people taking probiotics. Yeah, yeah. yeah we have prebiotics yeah. inside of our uh, okay. of our treats. So our treats have prebiotics and they have omega threes and sixes as well. Mm -hmm. So every product we release will have some level of like additional functionality. It's not just a cleaner protein, yep. but it has functionality too. Cool. And what is what's your, your overall goal? Our, our mission is to really transform the pet food space. Yeah. Uh, we want to bring cleaner protein. We want to uh, improve the, the, the food for our pets. We also want to reduce animal suffering, right? We think that there's a lot of suffering that still goes into our food today. We want to make it cruelty free so that the, the dogs and cats in labs are no longer tested on. And we also want to re remove the suffering from, uh, from the animals that suffer in industrial animal agriculture as well. Um, it's exciting to me because so far in the dog food space, there are not a lot of options. There's a few and that's wonderful, but I think it's, uh, it's time for more companies to blossom up and for there to be just like diversity of options yes. <laughs> out there. So I'm really, really excited to see uh, Wild Earth being on shelves. And yeah. do you want to be in pet food stores? We do, we do. So like our, our, our yeah. broader vision is to be available everywhere. So yep. everywhere we see a conventional pet food, we Walmart. want Walmart. We want, mm -hmm. if Walmart, stacks all the conventional pet foods we want wild earth to be alongside all the other conventional pet foods right. and for it to be an affordable option for everyone yeah that's so awesome well thank you, thank you is there anything else you want to share about wild earth uh cool. well come and check us out we yeah. always love feedback so we're a creative innovative company we're always looking for suggestions so if there are new flavors new functional additives that you want to add into treats we're super open to that and we yeah. want to have that discussion yeah, I was just, uh, it's fall and there's pumpkins everywhere. And I was like, you should make a pumpkin theme. And you were like, there's already pumpkin. Yeah, we, we, we love pumpkin. <laughs> there's already pumpkin in there. So the ingredients are clean ingredients, uh, but they are, they're ingredients we'll recognize. So pumpkin, we think it's a great food for dogs. Yep. Um, and that's why we added it. Yep. And yeah. Chance has tried, tried, tried to buddy. treats. Yes. He tried them yes. and he loved them. This is some new treats for you. You want one? Go ahead. I mean, he eats everything. Yes. So he's not, he's not like a tough critic, yeah. but he loved them. He and loved them? Yeah, I'm excited to okay, great. more of them. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, thank you guys uh, for watching. If you want to check out Wild Earth, they can find you at wildearth.com. Yeah, wildearth.com. Yeah, and we're available for order right now. Cool. Yeah. And all over social media, all of the places, you can stay tuned to what this new but growing fast company is going to be yeah. doing. Really, really excited. Thank you yeah. for thank sharing. You. Thank you, Michelle. Awesome. Yes. Aww. Bye, guys. See you in the next video.